Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I'll be showing you guys how to make your own Minecraft server on your own PC. Uh, this video is going to have two different sections. The first section is going to be a really, really quick showcase of how to get it up and running. The second part of the video is going to be more in-depth and an explanation of how this whole server thing works. So if you already know the basis, uh, you can stick around just for the first portion, but if you want to know more, you can stick around for the second. Timestamps will be on screen as well. Um, but this this whole video is only how to set up a server. It's not to allow other players to connect. I can do that in a different video if you want. Just put it down in the comments down below because that involves port forwarding. So anyways, let's get right into the video. Whatever download that you have right here, so what I'm going to do is rename this, I'm going to call this server, and then now I'm going to also change this to server.jar, so make sure whatever you change here, you change here. Uh, this is the spigot that you just downloaded. So I'm going to save that, make sure when you save it, save it as a batch file, so run.bat and make sure that you end it in all types, okay? Save that, and save that, now you'll have a batch file here, click that, and this is what it should look like. It will start loading the libraries, and then it should say you need to accept the EULA, which is like so, go to EULA, change this to true, save that, and then restart your server, click to run again. And as you see, now our server is successfully loaded, and this is the quick setup. Hey, how's it going everyone? And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create your own Minecraft server with plugins. And uh, this video is just going to be showing you how to download and get your server running on your own PC. Uh, and then in the next video I will be showing you guys how to port forward. And if you guys don't know what that means, basically it allows for your friends and other people to join your server that's hosted on your own network. So first thing that you want to do is get whatever server version that you want running. So right now uh, I'm on getbucket.org. I will leave a link down in the description. This is where you can download uh, the different versions of Minecraft and the different builds. So you want to go to downloads or you can just click it right here. Uh, you got your vanilla, which is just plain Minecraft, no extra anything to it. And then spigot and craft bucket. Uh, I highly recommend spigot, it's a lot more customizable and it runs a lot smoother. Craft bucket is just, you know, craft bucket. <laughs> so it, they both allow plugins, but spigot, spigot is a lot more customizable. So I highly recommend that. So go ahead and click on spigot. And then as of recording this video, uh, versions 1.14.2 are out right now and brand spanking new as well. So this is just the day, uh, there was released a day right before my recording. So uh, you can download any type of version, server version that you want. Just click the download button. For this video, I'm going to be doing the very latest version, 1.14.2. So go ahead and click the download, and then go ahead and click the download right here. So we get 1.14.2.jar. Go ahead and keep that, and then uh, it will download. Next step that you want to do is go ahead and create a folder on your desktop or wherever that you can remember for this video and for ease of access I'm just going to make it on my desktop and you can name this whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to put 1.14 server just like so and then I'm going to head and go show on folder and then open your 1.14 server folder and then just drag your server version a jar inside there. You can close that and you can close your internet browser as well. One thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video is make sure you have Java installed on your computer uh, or else this will not work. Uh, typically you can't even run Minecraft without Java installed on your computer but just in case it's not go ahead uh, link is down in the description I will link it to where you can download Java for your computer and then just download that and then all these uh, jars should uh, have the little icon right there. So next thing that you want to do is uh, go ahead and rename your server.jar to something that you can remember. You can call it spigot, uh, spigot, or you can name it server, or this is pretty much whatever you want to. Just keep it simple so when you're running the Java code, you can remember what you put in there. So 
I'm just gonna call this 1.14 just to make it easy, all right? So you can, as I said, you can name it whatever you want. So the next thing that you wanna do is go ahead and create a text document. So I'm using Notepad++, uh, you can use the normal Notepad, this works the same exact way. Alright, so then you can name your text document, I'm just going to call this uh, Startup. So I'm going to call it Startup, as I said you can name this whatever as well. So go ahead and open your Startup. So once you're in Notepad or Notepad++, this works the exact same way, all the code is the same as long as you're in Notepad. So we'll do Java, and then dash X, M, S, and then 1, G. So what this stands for, this is your minimum amount of RAM for your server to run, which is one gigabyte. So that's just easy to remember. And then you can change this to whatever you want, uh, by the way. So if you want it smaller, you can do 512M, which stands for 512 megabytes, or you can do like 2G or 3G, depending on what uh, your computer specs are. So I'm just do it a 1G, so that is one gigabyte. Now we can do X, M, X, and 1G, so that stands for the maximum amount of RAM, which is one gigabyte as well, and then dash, and then jar, okay? So now we have the dash jar, so this is where our file name comes into play. So whatever you name uh, your spigot.jar, as I said, this, uh, you can name it whatever, in my video, I'm calling it 1.14, so the next step that you want to do is after the dash jar, call it whatever you name it, okay? So I'm going to put 1.14.jar. So this just specifies in the code that this is the jar that it's going to be looking for when you're starting up your server. So whatever you put in here has to be the same name as your spigot.jar that you downloaded. So just keep that in mind, that is essential for you to run this. And then make sure you guys, I'm really stressing this, make sure you guys have the same name uh, jar as you put in your code as you're in your folder, all right? So make sure you do that. Next step is we're gonna save it. So uh, if you're in Notepad, just go to save as, and then we'll do all types of files. And then I'm gonna call this run dot bat, okay? Make sure when you're naming this, make sure you have the dot bat at the end, because that is a batch file which will start your server up. So I'm just call all this run dot bat, so I'm gonna save that just like so. And as you see, uh, it is in our folder. That's why I say at the very beginning, make sure you have a folder where all your files are and all in the same place. So if we go ahead and click run, then we'll have this startup. Uh, let me drag it up here. We'll have a startup. As you see, it is start starting up and then we need to create the end user license agreement, the EULA, in order for our server to run. So go ahead and click any key to continue so it closes your command prompt. And then go back and into your EULA and it should open up and just change this to true. Make sure you save it, you can close it and then reopen your run, and you should have uh, it open just like so, and it'll just start waiting for the little libraries to load, and just like so, there we go, we have our server running. This is where all your files and folders will load, and here, as you see, our server is running successfully, which is awesome, all right? So that is what we have, and it'll take like a minute or so to load uh, once it starts preparing spawn and all that good stuff, so I'll come back when it's fully loaded. All right, our server has successfully loaded, and everything looks good next thing that you want to do pretty much the very last step is go into your minecraft and we'll go ahead and add a server and then you can just type in local host just like so and uh, now we can go ahead and join our server so you can direct connect or add a server either one works and it looks like everything is loading correctly loading terrain okay that's a good sign and there we go now we are in our own minecraft server which is awesome so uh if you do any commands uh you probably shouldn't have anything uh yeah so as you see you are not an operator so to make yourself an operator just go into your minecraft console type in op and then your username so that just makes your operator owner of the server and now you have access to every single command have game mode creative so that's pretty much it as i said your friends will not be able to join you on the server unless you port forward so just keep that in mind um as i said i can do another video uh and just put it in the comments below if you want to see that uh one last thing i want to show you real quick is uh to shut down your server you can just do type in stop and that just saves everything saves the chunks uh because if you just exit out your server will still be running shut it down and then restart it and add plugins and all that good stuff that's how you shut it down and then to restart it just go back into your folder and just hit the run and then your server will automatically start back up and just like so it will start loading the library so um that's how you create your own minecraft server on your uh pc and let me know if you have any questions down below i will be happy to answer them i will see you guys next time peace